Hello everyone, uh, I'm Patrick. Uh, so I recently hiked across Ireland along the E8 route. And so I decided to put together this video of frequently asked questions uh, to help anyone in the future hike it. Uh, this is a part of a playlist. I literally have everything you need to know to hike across Ireland. Uh, so in terms of gear, wild camping, uh, logistics, that kind of thing. So in this video, I'm just gonna run through a bunch of FAQs I've gotten from people uh, whether they've been online or from family and friends, uh, just a bunch of information, all the information you need to hike across Ireland, essentially. Um, I'll put timestamps below uh, to each of the questions, so if you're looking for something in particular, just jump ahead. And I'll put links to everything I discuss below and in terms of other videos or whatever else I'm talking about, in terms of gear or whatever else. Uh, so yeah, let's jump into it. Uh, so do you need a permit to hike around? Uh, no, you don't, simple as that. Uh, as long as you're in Ireland, you can hike anywhere pretty much. Uh, so what is the EA Trail? Uh, so the EA Trail is part of the European uh, long distance hiking uh, paths. Uh, so there's a bunch of them, I think 12 in total, maybe more. Uh, the EA Trail goes from Jersey Island in West Ireland, or West Cork, Ireland, all the way to Istanbul, in Turkey. Uh, I just did the Irish section, uh, the, uh, the EA Trail, which starts, uh, goes from Dublin to start the Wicklow Way in Dublin. Uh, Jersey Island in Cork. Uh, so that's what the EA trail is. Uh, so how long is the IEA trail? Uh, the Irish section at least. Uh, so from start of the way to Jersey Island it's 622 kilometers. When I did it I started in the 40 foot in Dublin which is on the coast, the actual coast of the Irish Sea. So I did a full coast to coast hike whereas if you just started to start the way you're not technically at the coast, you're uh, in Sardar Marley Park. Uh, so I recommend just adding on the extra 20-30 kilometers uh, next day, really, uh, to do a full coast to coast that you just hike through Dublin City. Uh, so if you do that, it's about 650 kilometers, 400 miles long. How long does it take? Obviously, this is many variables involved in this. If you average 20 kilometers a day, it takes 32 days. Uh, if you do 40 kilometers a day, it's 16 days. Uh, I'd say on average, it will take most people a month to do pretty much. Um, you'll do more than 20 kilometers per day, usually, uh, pretty pretty easily. Then you obviously have to take into account how many days you take off, that type of thing. Um, so I did it you know, in Saturday, July 22nd, I finished September 1st. And I took nine days off in August to head home to Limerick. Uh, for my niece's christening and I had to get off trail for an extra two or three days because there was a status red warning for Cork uh, as a big storm hit. Uh, so I was on trail for yeah, like, literally 30 days, something like that. So yeah, I'd say a minimum of two and a half weeks to a maximum of six weeks, depending on how, how, many, days how many days you take off, how slow you're hiking, that type of thing. Can you camp along the way? I uh, guess you can. I wild camp the entire way. Uh, I have another video where I discuss in detail exactly where I camped each night. So if you're interested in that, uh, click here or check the description, you'll see a link to that. Irish camping laws are fairly restrictive, uh, so you have to be somewhat secretive. But uh, again, I wrote that in the other video, but it is possible to camp the entire way. Uh, if you don't want to camp, can you stay only in B&Bs, hotels, the whole way? Yes, you can. There's plenty of accommodation on the trail. There might be a few sections here and there where it might make sense to, instead of hiking from B&B &B to B&B, &B, you set up a base B&B &B or hotel and then get picked up and dropped off each day. You could do that. Uh, so for example, for in the Wicklow way, it's pretty common for people just to have like a, a base where they get picked up and dropped off each day. And so you just do the sections, get picked up, get brought back to the hotel. Uh, have a dinner and stay, sleep for the night. Then the next morning they're dropped off to the next section and do that, move back and forth. So you could do that along the way. Obviously, if you're this, it's more expensive. Uh, depending on where you are, the average cost of a and b in a hotel could be ranged from 40 euro a night to 100 plus euro a night, depending on the quality and what you're looking for exactly. Um, but yeah, it's entirely possible to do it, say in a and b in a hotel along the way. Uh, how do I get water on trail? Uh, so in Ireland, there are plenty of water sources along the way. Yeah, so essentially you just need to trust the trail will provide water. Uh, it's Ireland, it rains a lot, so there's plenty of water streams. Um, I had no problems. I carried a capacity for two and a half liters of water with me, so I had two one-year bottles and one uh, 500 ml water bottle. 
And yeah, so what I would do is I use Aquamira drops to treat the water. You can either use Aquamira or a filter like a Sawyer filter. I'll put links below for that if you want to look at them. When I get to a water source, whether it be a river or a stream, um, I would do what's called a camel up, which was I drink water at that source. So I drink maybe like a liter of water at that source. And I'd top up my two and a half liter water supply, and then I'd hike on to the next water supply. But uh, yeah, it's very rare why I didn't come across at least one place where I get water each day I hiked. So yeah, it's easy enough to find water on trail. And worst case scenario, they're never that far from civilization in Ireland. When you hike, hike in Ireland, you'll find a farmhouse somewhere or a little town somewhere. And worst case scenario, you can knock on someone's door and say, hey, look, I'm hiking. I need some water. Can I fill up here? But I never had to do that. I found water on trail plenty of times. Uh, can I bring a dog on the trail? In some sections, you can. If you're going to do the whole trail, I wouldn't do it, to be honest. There are some sections where you're going through farmland and they, they Private land and farms are best. You don't bring dogs on trail just in case the dogs chase animals, sheep, or whatever. Um, and there's some sections where dogs are just uh, forbidden. And these these sections could just be 10 minutes long or they could be entire days long. Um, and there are pretty numerous stretch trails. So if you're planning on hiking a dog, there could be some sections you could do, but you could do the whole trail with a dog. Uh, is it dangerous? Um, dangerous relative, I guess. Uh, but for me, the actual Wilderness part of it wasn't dangerous at all. The trail is well remarked, it's pretty well maintained for the most part. Um, the most dangerous parts are actually probably when you're uh, re engaging with society, where you're walking down um, an old country road or an old, an old sometimes your, the route goes down motorways, that, that, that kind of thing. Uh, and so you have to keep your eye out for traffic. Um, so that's probably the most dangerous part of it. There are, there are some sections. I found where you're coming across guard dogs, which aren't behind gates, and so they're just barking at you. And obviously, this can be uncomfortable, but uh, the dogs have actually attacked me. They just barked at me, which is fine. Um, so yeah, maybe just keep your wits about you with that. Uh, but actually, the trail itself, I didn't find it to be very dangerous. Uh, obviously, I was hiking in the summer, so the temperatures never dropped below zero, even when there was storms and it was raining. So I didn't have to worry about like hypothermia, that type of thing. But if you're hiking in the winter, um, obviously temperatures are can drop below zero, so you have to worry about that. You have to make sure you have the right gear for that. Uh, but overall, I wouldn't say it's very dangerous in terms of, in relative terms. Uh, how much does it cost? So again, it depends on what you're doing. If you're Wild camping versus seeing B&Bs, it's much different. But I wild camped, so all I really had to worry about for the most part was food and I cooked myself on trail. So but I budgeted five or 10 euro per day for the food I ate. And then maybe once or twice a week, I'd stay in a hotel or b, &B. So I'd say finger in the air, I kind of average would be a 20 euro per day. So it depends on how quickly you're hiking. If you're doing for example, if you're doing it in two and a half weeks, then versus six weeks, then your cost will be much different, obviously. But if you're wild camping, I, I would say budget 20 euro per day and you should be fine, pretty much. And this is assuming you have all your gear and you're in Ireland. So I'm not including airfare or transport or the thing to actually get on trail and not including costs for actual gear you use. I'm assuming you have all your hiking gear and you're actually on the trail. So 20 euro per day once you're on trail. Uh, so which direction should I walk in? So I hiked southbound, Sobo, as they say. Uh, you can hike in either direction. I would say, personally, I would recommend hiking southbound the way I did so starting in Dublin and going down. The uh, reason I recommend this is because it's much easier to get to Dublin public transport-wise. To get to the southern tip, you have to get a bus down to Bearhaven and then a taxi to the tip to of Jersey Island. And I'd also say the further west you go, the wider the trail gets. So it's more enjoyable starting off in Dublin and then getting progressively, progressively more and more wild as you go, into, as you hike. So you get your trail legs and you start in Dublin and you cross the Midlands, which is uh, kind of flat and a little road walking. And then you'll hit the west and where it'll be uh, more wild and uh, rugged and something. So you can, you can hike either direction, uh, but I recommend hiking southbound because it's 
more enjoyable in my opinion. It's a trail wheel marked signpost, uh, yes it is. There's a little yellow man that you can find the whole, whole way essentially. Uh, there, this is that sign in Ireland for the Waymark trails. Uh, so the E8 combines the Wicklow Way, the South Minster Way, the East Munster Way, the Blackwater Way, and the sections of the Kerry and Barrow Way. And yeah, they, they're all well signposted. There's a few sections here and there where you might have to look around uh, to find signposts, but they're pretty much always there. Uh, so how do you actually navigate on trail? So as I said, you can use the signposts, but obviously you don't want to hundreds that line them because sometimes uh, they fall over or they're obscured by bushes. Uh, so I used an app called Hiker. It's Hiker with two I's, so H-I-I-K-E-R. I'll put a link below. Uh, and that has uh, maps you can download for offline use. Uh, so you can save the, save the battery on your phone and you can just use the GPS like that. And they have a map for the entire EA trail, but also for the set smaller ones. So if you want to just do the wiggle away, you can zoom in on that. And that, 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 that type of thing. Um, I also have a Google map as a backup, uh, so I just exported the KML, import that into Google, and have the map there. And I'll put a link, I'll put a link to that below as well. But really, I don't need to worry too much about navigating on trail, it's pretty easy. Uh, there's some sections here and there where you're cutting through farmland or that type of thing where you to just keep an eye on the trail, but uh, very rarely you get lost. And uh, just keep an eye on your GPS and you should be fine. Uh, so what gear should you bring? Uh, I have another video where I went through all the gear. I'll put a link to my lighter pack link, which has, again, all the gear I used. Um, so I hiked in July and August, so I was more uh, cadet for summer. Again, if you're hiking winter, you need more uh, robust gear. But generally speaking, you you don't, any, you don't need any special gear, kind of what you need, what you expect. Tent, sleeping bag, a sleeping mattress, some hiking clothes, warm clothes, all that good stuff. Pot for cooking, that kind of stuff. So again, I won't go through everything here. If you're looking for exactly what I brought, just check the links, links below and you'll see everything I had. Now, it's the best, what's the best time to hike? So around, it's, uh, you can hike pretty much all year round. Obviously in winter it's more dark and cold and wet, but we have a temperate climate here, so it's never too extreme. Uh, but obviously the best times high could be from, I'd say like May to September. Um, that's where you'll get the least amount. It won't be raining as much, it'll still be raining in Ireland. There'll always be some days where it's raining. Um, and the uh, days will be longer, so you get more sunlight. Um, it's better for hiking. Um, so yeah, I would say pretty much what you expect in the summer is the best time to hike. So I hiked July, August, and probably the peak, the peak where you can hike in Ireland. Uh, but anywhere, but anywhere around just uh, spring, summer, you should, you should be fine. And is there a lot of road walking? Uh, yes, there is a lot of road walking. They estimate about 50% of the trail is actually road walking, but that's not that. So that 50% contains actually old forestry roads as well. So you're walking, you're walking through a forest, but it's on an old forestry road. Um, I, could, I would say maybe 20, 25% is actually on an actual car road, a road for a car. Uh, most of these roads are actually old country lanes. Uh, so when you think road walking, you think of oh, walking on motorway or that kind of thing. It's not like that in Ireland. You're actually are in a very picturesque, beautiful place, but you're walking out an old country lane. Um, can be annoying with kind of you can zone out completely. You have to keep in mind that it could be a car in the corner, that type of thing. But uh, they're usually very quiet roads, only kind of used by the locals, and you're kind of well used to driving slow either for other cars coming because these aren't two, usually they're not uh, two lane roads or one lane roads. So any car coming is expecting is looking at for driving slow because they're expecting a car to come the other way. Although there is a lot of road walking, it's not what you would. Uh, think of in terms of walking on the motorway or something like that. But yes, it can get tedious at times. There are certain, certain sections like towards the end of the Wicklow Way and around the Sentinel Way where you're up pretty much on road all day, uh, which can get annoying, but uh, it is what it is. You just like hike, hike on through it and you shoot you. Eventually you'll find that you'll be in a forest somewhere. Um, there are a couple of sections where the trail is routed down roads where doesn't feel safe to be honest. Uh, some sections where you're on a motorway and it's not enjoyable. 
um, some sections where you're going through S curves on old, old roads and, and wrong time, wrong place, and you could end up dead. Um, but that's a very small percentage of the trail, but it is there. And just again, keep your wits about you, it should be fine. So how much food should you carry? So I'd say the longest food carry I had was maybe three or four days. There are some sections where you're literally coming into a town every day. Uh, like Satin's the way I think you pretty much, you, uh, you can pretty much just carry one day's worth of food and you arrive into a town the next day and you can resupply them if you want to do that. But yeah, you shouldn't worry too much about how much food you'd carry because you, you'll come into a town fairly often along the trail. Now at some towns, these might just be small little grocery stores uh, they won't have the best options, but they'll have enough to get you by. And then most towns will have a Super Value or a Tesco or a Lidl, where you can, or an Aldi, where you can do a, like a big resupply if you wanted to. Uh, so how do you get to start the trail? So assuming you're going southbound, start the trail is Marley Park. Uh, again, it's in Dublin, so you literally can, if you you just get a bus there if you wanted to. It's pretty simple. Um, as I said before, I'd recommend. Start in the actual on the actual coast of Ireland, and uh, Dunleary or wherever else you feel best. I would suggest a forty foot. It's pretty easy to get there, and uh, it's pretty quite nice. Um, so yeah, you can start from the forty foot in Dublin. Again, you can get the bus there or the dart. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty much start a train going southbound. It's just in Dublin. It's pretty easy. That's why I suggest going southbound because if you want to go to start the other way, then you have to go through this whole rigmarole of public transport and taxis and stuff. Uh, so, assuming you're going southbound, how do you get off the trail? Uh, so, say you get to Jersey Island, 10 euro for a cable car, cash only by the way. Uh, so, then you get back, uh, get back, so then you get back, back from Jersey Island to the cable car station. Uh, I arranged a taxi the night before to pick me up uh, around 3 or 4 o'clock. Uh, I'll put the number to the taxi I use below, they have no website, this is you're in rural Ireland here, so like you don't expect any of the uh, modern, uh, don't expect any modern apps or anything like that. Like, you have to call someone and arrange a taxi to pick you up. Uh, so, to get on trail from Jersey Island cable car, call the taxi, number below, 30 euros go from Jersey Island cable car to Castletown Bearhaven, which is the nearest uh, town that has public transport. Uh, from Castletown Bearhaven, you can then get a bus. Uh, again, I'll put the, where the bus stop is and the number of the bus below the timetable. Um, the bus stop is just in the center of the town. Uh, and there, there are certain days that the bus doesn't come. Tuesday and Thursday, it doesn't come. Uh, so you might have to stay an extra day in town, depending on when you get there. From there, you can get the bus to Cork City. And once you're in Cork, you're back in a normal town, you can go wherever you need to go. Uh, from there, from the, the bus cost 22 euro one way, which I thought was pretty expensive, but again, you're in the middle of nowhere, so I guess it's expected. Um, so yeah, that's how you get off the trail. That's how I got off the trail. And you could get picked up, you could get a taxi, you could get a shuttle if you wanted to, but uh, that was what I found to be the most uh, cheapest, way, cheapest way to get off trail. And so yeah, that's it. That's all the FAQs I have. If you have any more questions, uh, leave a comment below, I'll get back to you. Uh, or check out the other videos where I talk about wild camping, gear, and experience on trail. And um, yeah, cheers. Happy hiking.